Tonight, Duke leaders say they're reviewing their policies. They want to know exactly what procedures were in place during the time period in which Meredith Watson claimed she was raped by Virginia Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax. CBS 17's Colleen Quigley digging deeper into assault investigations at universities tonight. She joins us live from Duke. Colleen. Yes, Angela, not only did they want to determine what those policies were, they want to make sure they were actually followed because Watson has made two claims that she was raped while she was a student here at Duke nearly 20 years ago. And in one of those claims, she alleges it was at the hands of a university basketball player. And she says when she told one of the school's deans about it, she was discouraged from taking that report any further. It happens more than anybody would like to imagine. Kathy Hodges advocates for assault survivors with the Durham Crisis Response Center and often partners with Duke University's Women's Center. We work with students. Um, either they called us and um, have set up an appointment or we might have met them in the emergency room when they've gone for a sexual assault examination. On Monday, Duke said it's trying to determine what the university's sexual assault policies were nearly two decades ago after a woman, Meredith Watson, came forward last week claiming she was raped by the now Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, Justin Fairfax, and prior to that by a Duke basketball player. She claimed she was assaulted by Fairfax in 2000 when they both were students at Duke. Nationwide, colleges' sexual assault policies have come under the microscope in recent years. Hodges says many schools began revising procedures in 2010. They are required to do a lot of Title IX work, which is, not, which is fairly new around sexual assault and making sure that students who are survivors of sexual assault have adequate access to services and protection on campus. Duke's current policies encourage students to report sexual assaults and outline just how those allegations are handled. According to the university's most recent review, the school received 189 reports of sexual misconduct in the 2017-18 school year. Most of those cases were closed or resulted in non-disciplinary action, but 10 of them were referred for investigation, and of those, three resulted in students suspended for sexual violence. Today, Watson's attorneys released another statement saying that she would be willing to testify if Virginia legislatures went ahead with hearings of impeachment against Fairfax. Meanwhile, the lieutenant governor says he is not guilty of these allegations and he will not be resigning. Reporting live in Durham, Colleen Quigley, CBS 17 News.